This is a device that is long overdue. We're looking at the HP Omen Transcend 14. And I was trying to think of a way of how to intro this video. I didn't want to be just another one of the hype train guys saying that this was going to be the greatest device in 2024. I wanted to create a review that was all inclusive to the performance, the efficiency, and the usability of this laptop. So that's what I set out to do with this review. I hope you hang on with me for the entirety of it. First and foremost, as always, I unbox the laptop. And in unboxing, it comes with a 140 watt charger block that is not too heavy, but still provides enough power from the wall to give everything we need from this laptop. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is they took the HP Omen that we know of and love, the 16 inch model, and really downsized it into this really nice compact 14 inch model. The weight and thickness is very reasonable. You can see even adding the charger block creates a nice thin and light on the go package for you. We have the ledge that is seen on the latest HP Omen 16, a little bit more rounded than the Omen 16. I do like the rounded edges. They have a very nice form factor holding when you're carrying it. However, one thing I noticed right, right off the bat is the fingerprints. You can see I've only touched the laptop once there and now twice there and already fingerprints. And traditionally I have kind of oily fingers, but most people do. And I would say that this is an issue with the black model. And so if you're concerned about fingerprints, I would definitely recommend checking out the white model. Now there are some different options available. Let's dive into those. If you head on over to hp.com, you can check out the different configurations for the Omen Transcend 14. Starting off at $1499, you'll receive the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and RTX 4050. Upgrade that to the RTX 4060 with the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, 16 gigs of RAM, and you will be at about $1,569. Going to the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, takes you up to 32 gigs of RAM, as well as the RTX 4070, and you'll be at $2,069. Now keep in mind that all of the units, no matter if you choose the base model or you choose the top of the line model will all come with the same 2.8K OLED display. So keep in mind, you're going to have that same display no matter which model you choose. Now, if you want to go ahead and upgrade to the RTX 4070 and one terabyte of SSD, that'll put you at $2,159. Now, if you head on over to bestbuy.com, you can actually get a slightly better deal on the laptop. If you look here, according to the pricing right now, now again, pricing might change when you watch this video. So head down in the description below, click those links for the live pricing. But at this moment, you can get the RTX 4070 with one terabyte and 32 gigs of RAM at $1,999 or you can get the RTX 4060 with one terabyte of SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, Intel Core Ultra 7 at $1,699. So to me, the best bang for buck, according to the pricing that I'm seeing right now, is going to be Best Buy with the RTX 4070 one terabyte SSD. Now the upgrade path is an area that creators and gamers alike take advantage of on most gaming devices. However, for this laptop, you're only gonna have access to the storage drive. You're gonna have one storage drive slot, an M.2 slot that is interchangeable. However, you do not have a second M.2 slot to add a storage drive. So keep that in mind. And you will not have the opportunity to upgrade the RAM. What you purchase the laptop with is what it will stay with. It is soldered to the motherboard. So we pull off the bottom cover to reveal the 71 watt hour battery. And you can see we have vents going through just here at the fan placement. There's actually this plastic very, very thin piece of plastic that covers the entire vent uh, in the middle. So you can see those are the only spots that actually have air flowing through because instead of having uh, heat pipes, we have a whole thermal chamber. What makes the HP Omen Transcend 14 different than any other laptop I've ever had on my channel? And that is Intel Core Ultra. What that means is you have a chip that can produce high performance, 6K video editing paired up with the RTX 4060 or RTX 4070, but also ultra low power tasks, which using AI technology can passively shift between the different tiles on the chipset in order to get you the best battery life and have the ultimate efficiency possible. This is their first modular design that layers four individual tiles onto their chipset, a CPU, GPU, SOC, and IO. The most newsworthy tile is a new type of E-Core embedded directly into the SOC tile, which Intel calls low power island. These new LP E-Cores on the IO tile are also responsible for the improved low power capabilities. 
If you're streaming video on YouTube, Disney Plus, or the like, the system will automatically utilize the LPE cores instead of the traditional P or E cores. The result is having a laptop with an RTX 4070 that could get over 10 hours of battery life. As you can see, the different results coming up on the screen now. For streaming video playback, we saw over 10 hours. For Passmark productivity, over 10 hours of battery life. And I ran these tests multiple times in order to verify their authenticity. This wasn't just a one-hit wonder situation. From there, you see video editing and Photoshop battery life with this laptop. Not only do we have a laptop that's more power efficient, but also more powerful. Now that we're seeing more and more software companies come out with AI tools, the MPU within Intel Core Ultra is powering things like Photoshop and Premiere Pro so that you don't just have performance boosts in your technology, but the technology provides you with productivity boosts. Now let's dive into some of those AI tools already available inside of the Adobe Suite. In Premiere Pro, you can take a 16 by nine long form video, place it into a vertical timeline and select auto reframe and it will automatically pan the camera and follow along with the object that is within the video. Now from there, let's say you wanna cut that down into further shorts to then put on different social media platforms. You can go ahead and select scene edit detection and it will chop up that long form video into individual clips that you can then rearrange into your own montage to post on vertical video platforms. This can literally save you hours of time when splicing out content to post on all the different distribution points that we have in today's day. Now my favorite feature of all would definitely be text-based editing. You can go ahead and paste a long form video into Premiere Pro. This could be upwards to two to three hours. Have it transcribe the video. Then you can go ahead and find the section of the video based on what was said in that section, highlight that section and crop it out of the entire long form video. That could take 10, 20, 30 minutes to well over an hour to find that exact section by listening through the video and you can just go ahead and search it via text. All right, now we're inside of Photoshop, gonna mess with some AI tools. And the first thing I must say is I'm really mad about these tools because I had to literally go to four years of college in order to learn how to do some of these things. Uh, let's just go ahead and click remove background. One, two, three, four. Four seconds, four years versus four seconds. <laughs> Makes me so angry. Now, if you wanna crop out an object, you can do that in a flash as well. Now, if you wanna go ahead and expand the background on an image, you go ahead, jump into Photoshop, grab the crop tool, expand the background. You'll see white space around it, and then just click generative expand. And you now have an expanded background around your initial subject. Now, these tools are absolutely insane. And I love Photoshop's tour of what's possible with these tools, how it takes a cat off somebody's shoulder and then turns it into a cat on a jet ski with a sunset. I think it's absolutely fantastic and a hilarious example of what is possible with the power of generative AI. What it boils down to is a great prompt. What you tell the AI to generate, what you tell the AI to create for you. The components are here. Intel Core Ultra provides the performance that you need to access and utilize AI tools, but it is up to you to create something beautiful from them. Huge thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video and sending over the HP Omen so we can have an in-depth look at the performance capabilities for creators. Now, taking a look at the assembly of the laptop, very well done. You can see the bottom cover fits into the side panels very nicely. I really like the large open vent along the bottom here. You can see that both fans do have access to the vent and then there's a little plastic sheet that you can see when you are pulling off the bottom cover that is actually covered. So this whole vent is not actually venting your laptop, just these two sections where the fan are. And then along the back side, you can see we have a little bit of a vent here and along the back side here where air is being flown through the laptop. Now, as we open the laptop up, they've done a very good job of not pointing any air towards the screen in order to keep that panel nice and cool. And before we get into the inside of the laptop, let's talk about the ports. The ports on the HP Omen, we have one USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port at 40 gigabytes per second signaling rate. We have one USB Type-C at 10 gigabytes per second signaling rate. And both of these are USB power delivery and display port. Now you also have a USB type A at 10 gigabytes signaling rate, and you have a USB type A again at 10 gigabytes signaling rate. One of the USB type A's can offer HP sleep and charge while the other does not. And you also have one HDMI 2.1 as well as a headphone jack. 
Let's go ahead and wipe the laptop once again from the fingerprints I've added just during the review. And now let's go ahead and use one hand to open the laptop. You can see it opens and closes easily with one hand. A nice strong magnet there that pops up and then opens up. And you can see that the, as far as the screen bounce is concerned, there's definitely a little bit, but it shakes off rather quickly and stabilizes. Now, if I'm really getting crazy, if I'm on a bus or a car, you can see that, let's say the, the desk is shaking a little bit. You can see there's a bit of screen wobble. So if you're on a plane or a bus or in a, a taxi or something, you will experience a little bit of screen wobble. Now let's go ahead and check out the flex. Not a ton of flex on the screen, definitely a little bit. Pushing down at the bottom, really nice between the two hinges, doesn't flex much there. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the keyboard deck. I would say there's quite a bit of flex on top of the keyboard deck. And actually when you flex there at the keyboard deck, you can hear, well, you can't hear, but there's actually a click happening there when you flex the keyboard deck. So you can click anywhere on the trackpad, which is nice, even up to the top. Um, but just keep in mind that it's quite flexy there and there, which actually activates the click. So keep that in mind. Now the keyboard is fantastic. They've done such a good job with the design of it. You can see the keys very well in the brightness of day or in the brightness of my office lights. They have this white appearance to the keycap. However, when you turn off the lights, the key color shines through with the RGB from where that white was. So whether you're in a bright environment or a dark environment, you can see the keys and the indication of the letter, number, or symbol on each of the keys very well. Now, I love that all the keys touch. However, they've created a translucent border around each of the keys, which shines this color through very nicely. Now, this key press is a short to medium key travel. It's a HyperX keyboard. And then the trackpad has a nice confident click. It's very reminiscent of the HP Omen 16 that we've all come to love. Now, what I love about the keyboard is you have this massive shift key on the right side. I'm a huge fan of full-size shift keys. And then you have nearly a full-size shift key on the left side. I'm not so much of a left shift key user, so I don't mind that it's a bit smaller. I just hate it when they make a three-fourths or two-thirds size shift key, and then they move the arrows and you end up pressing the arrow or a different key when you're trying to get shift, and it totally messes up your typing. Drives me crazy. Not going to be an issue here with this laptop. Now, they don't have a dedicated Copilot button on the laptop. You should just come down here, click Copilot to access Microsoft Copilot. It does a very good job generating an image. It generates an image about 20 seconds. So the Intel Core Ultra CPU does a great job of making sure that it has the performance it needs to do generative AI tasks. Now, remember that Microsoft Copilot will also provide you with meeting notes, you can ask questions, draft emails, respond to text messages, all very easily from Microsoft Copilot if you have the apps integrated. So really nice AI features that they're continuing to push out and more AI apps as they come available. Now here's a quick audio sample of the keyboard and trackpad in use so you can hear what they sound like. This is the webcam on the HP Omen Transcend 14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Let's go ahead and jump into the HP Omen Hub and check out the customization from the performance as well as the keyboard. The Omen Gaming Hub gives us a lot of options for the Omen Transcend 14. You can go ahead and look into the performance control settings and you can go between performance, balanced, and eco mode. But even better with this new Intel Core Ultra 7 and the Intel Core Ultra 9 is that you're able to get into the graphics switcher and switch over to integrated graphics only, which is going to provide you with much better battery life than if you were to leave simply on hybrid mode. Those Intel Arc graphics are very efficient, and if you want to get the optimized battery life that this laptop can provide, I definitely recommend switching over to integrated graphics. Looking in the lighting, you have three individual zones that you can program very easily. Just switch it over and click apply, and you can make the setup whatever you'd like, whatever fits your preferences. Personally, with the stock setup that it comes with, I want to switch over this side to blue because it's kind of hard to see the WASD keys with that yellow setup. I'm going to switch that yellow to a deeper orange so I can really see that pop if I want to use those. So that's the setup I really like. I love that blue-orange contrast. 
Remember, as we're going through the video, if you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability of the HP Omen Transcend 14, you can head down in the description below and click those links if you do make a purchase. I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. The HP Omen has a 2.8K HDR OLED display that reaches 120 hertz with a resolution of 2880 by 1800. It has a screen brightness of 487 nits at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI P3, all in a Delta E of 0.87. As we're diving into the performance section of this video, I'm gonna have full head-to-head -head reviews versus other 14-inch laptops with the HP Omen. So definitely keep an eye on the channel. You might wanna subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on those upcoming videos. And definitely just give a nice tap for that subscribe button. You don't have to mash it, that's just silly. Okay, checking out the simulated benchmark, as you can see Cinebench R24 or Cinebench 2024, however you wanna call it. You said the HP Omen is really nailing well the mid-range with the RTX 4060 and Intel Core Ultra 7. However, if you wanna get maximum performance out of the HP Omen 14, I definitely recommend checking out the Intel Core Ultra 9 25H with the RTX 4070, sitting right in line with Intel's high performing processors. So not only are we gonna see really good power efficiency with this laptop, but you're also gonna have great performance. And you'll see just in a minute, the battery life capabilities of this is, is incredible. The next thing we wanna take a look at is the Photoshop benchmark. You can see that for Photoshop, the HP Omen is doing a really good job optimized with the Intel Core 7 around the midway in the chart, just like before. And then the Intel Core Ultra 9 and the HP Omen right at the top of the charts with a 6,888. So great performance inside of Photoshop, especially with that 32 gigs of RAM with the upper tier version of the HP Omen. You're gonna have all the headroom you need to work well in Photoshop, InDesign Illustrator, or even if you're using GIMP. Fantastic chipset, GPU, and RAM inside of this laptop. Now moving down the line to video editing, the Intel Core Ultra 7 version of the laptop with the 16 gigs of RAM and RTX 4060 will be a great 4K video editing laptop. However, if you're gonna be getting into 6K video editing, I definitely recommend getting the 32 gigs of RAM, the Intel Core Ultra 9, and the RTX 4070. That will provide you with the GPU and the CPU performance to have good playback and export times for 6K video editing. Let's go ahead and quickly look at the 4K export time and then I'll show you those 6K export times. Looking at 4K, you see solid export times out of both the Intel Core Ultra 7 model and the Intel Core Ultra 9 model. You can see we have two minutes and 31 seconds out of the nine and two minutes and 36 seconds out of the seven. So great performance for 4K on both of these models, as I said. Now, as we move for 6K video editing, this is where I think the best pick is going to be the Intel Core Ultra 9 and the RTX 4070. You can see we have a 19 minute and 24 second export time out of the laptop. Solid export time on this laptop for the RTX 4070 equipped version. That's definitely my recommendation for 6K video editing. If you're not into 6K, I think you'd be perfectly well going with the Intel Core Ultra 7 version if you're gonna do 4K or 1080p video editing. Provides you with a better price point and just as good of performance. Now, if you're interested in doing 1080p video editing, you can see the full lineup of export times for both laptops coming up on the screen now. You can see they both had a 39 second export time in 1080p, whether you're looking at the RTX 4060 screen right now, coming up with those benchmarks, or now switching over to the RTX 4070, both were at 39 seconds for 1080p. So really good export times for both laptops on 1080p and 4K, but when you get to 6K, I recommend the RTX 4070 for the best performance. Now let's talk about the most important part of this laptop and that would be the power efficiency. The benefit of Intel Core Ultra 7 and Intel Core Ultra 9 is going to be that it provides really great high performance for say something like 4K export times, but then also it provides excellent power efficiency for something like long battery lives for streaming video playback. I obtained these specific results by using the HP Omen Gaming Hub set at integrated graphics, eco mode, 20% screen brightness, Windows Battery Saver mode turned on, and had the keyboard backlighting turned off. It is thin, light, has great power efficiency. The HP Omen has what you need. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for more videos coming out head-to-head -head of the HP Omen. I'll see you in the next one.